So it is a good day to you, huh? We introduce ourselves. Our name is Aronda. We bring with us an entire council of beings of light that are here for your behalf. You know and understand, as our vessel Maryland jokes about, but we are the light, as are you. You are, indeed, the next evolutionary step for humanity. You understand that responsibility. You volunteered for this time in existence. You volunteered to come here on this planet at this point in time with the catalyst of change as a leader. And the teachers of humanity coming round about to acknowledge you, your life, your energy. Because you see, you are the teachers of humanity. Take a deep breath. We ask our vessel, Marilyn, to do many things for us. We asked her to select a card. And she says to us, well, the card is in the suitcase in the car. I'm not going to run out and get it. And she says, there are other ways. You have a telephone app about mastery and of affirmations from our dear friend, Cryon. So we pulled an affirmation, a new thought for yourself. I mean, I want you to understand exactly what this new thought is, because it is not anything new. It is something that is quite old. But we believe that many of you might have forgotten it. And that thought is, take a deep breath, breathe it in. I am grateful for all the wonderful things in my life. The universe gives me countless blessings. Now we understand in that energy that as the universe gives us countless blessings, Sometimes those blessings seem to be so infinite in their possibilities. And sometimes those blessings seem to be, mm, maybe not quite much, so much like a blessing. Huh? You know, when something really horrendous happens. And that does, yes? You know it does. How can, when something really bad appears in your life, or it appears to be bad, how can that be reality? We had a dear friend recently, riding his bicycle, healthy, fit person, and stopped to check his tire, and had a heart attack and died right there on the spot. How can that be a blessing? Take a deep breath. You see, that is a part of the teachings. That is a part of the energy and the information. Because he volunteered for that mission, yes? He raised his hand and said, okay, I'll be riding on my bicycle at this point in time and this is what is going to happen. Or maybe something else would happen. So he can indeed help from the other side. And how many of the people in his circle then went to the doctor to have their heart checked out, huh? That is how it works, you see. Someone volunteers and says, let me help teach you something. Let me help teach you something that will be important to you at some point in time. We know his wife did. We know his, his relatives did. We know his other mm, friends and family immediately went to have their bodies checked out. So it may have prevented many things from um, dominoing. Do you understand what he volunteered for? You see, now, you do not have to take the same volunteering. You do not have the same, you understand that, right? That is negotiable, what you volunteer for. So you are those teachers, however. You are those beings of light that are the mm, spotlight. You know, when we come into a group like this, we see one of those big spotlights that they have at grand openings that light up the sky. 
And that is what you are. You are that spotlight that lights up the sky. Did you know that people who see, that see your energy, that is indeed what they see? Because you are their teacher. You are their experience of what is happening on this planet. <laughs> so dearest beings of light, we ask you, what are you teaching? Take a deep breath. What are you sharing? Are you sharing all the complaints about your blessings? Are you sharing all the pain and agony that you have, maybe suffered in your life, whatever, whatever, whatever? Stop telling that old story. Instead, it's time to create a new story. Understand, every single thing that happens in your world is significant. Trust that, and we will tell you more later. We love you very much. We see who you are. We see your love, your light, your pain, your joy. And we'll expand that joy as much as possible. We bid you namaste. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. So many times I have said this, and some of you understand it, I know your soul. I know your soul because it is allied with mine. And there would be those who would say, wait a minute, Cryon, do you have a soul? And the answer is, yes. You don't have to be a human to have a soul. The soul as defined would be the peace of divinity, of the source that you are as you walk here. If you know of the cycle that some of you have called reincarnation, it's actually misnamed. It's you returning, revitalized yet again from the source with the same soul. How many lifetimes have you lived? You had the same soul in all of them. Would it then make sense that this same soul would have a history that you might even be able to access called the Akash? And in this room, there are old souls. And that means that you've been here a lot. The soul of Cryon simply says it is one of the pieces like yours of the divine source. You might even say that although I'm not apparently human, that I am a sister and I'm a brother to all of you, like you are to one another in the room. I want to impress you on that before I start the real message. When you start to look at what is happening on the planet, that which my partner would teach before, not necessarily today, it is filled with profundity, purpose, timing, appropriateness, and massive change. What happens when you have paradigms change? There's a number of things that you could point to. The first thing is this, that your future is often seen as a repeat of the past. But if you have a paradigm shift, none of the principles, the actions, the interfaces, or the expectations of what has happened in the past can be applied to the future. And since none of you have been there yet, or experienced it yet, 
It's change that you don't necessarily appreciate or like or understand. The profundity of this goes further than just a paradigm shift for you. If you really understand the elements of physics that talk about time, you'd know that time is in a circle. And in this circle, you tend to run over some of the same energies you've created in the past, then creating that episode that you will call repeating history. And I just told you nobody has been there yet. So some of you are way ahead of me. And you would say, well, then what happened to the circle? <laughs> and the answer is you broke it. You are on another path. Call it dimensional shift if you wish. It's not totally accurate. Call it anything you want to. Which says this. You're beginning something new that has never happened on this planet ever before. And the thing that is driving it is not that outside source that some of you all fear. It's you. It's the consciousness of individuals starting to have a coherence together, a confluence of energy that will start to guide the planet. Look at the timing. You never had social media before. You never had the ability to be alone in a closet and contact a million people. And you can today. You can today. You never had the ability to form a consensus of what you're thinking. And you do today. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of human beings collectively can do something they never could before. They can do things that would make politicians shake in their boots because they're in such control and you don't know it yet. Oh, you will. Perfect timing for a paradigm shift going through a shift that was predicted thousands of years ago, way before modern religion. The ancients were involved. Thousands of years, it said, from the stars, there'll come a day measured by the precession of the equinox, a 26,000-year wobble on the earth. There'll come a day when humanity will end the time it was in and start another time. Profoundly, the Mayans called it a calendar that ended in 2012. It wasn't a mistake because that calendar was 5,125 years long. It's time for a shift and you're in it. A time change, a paradigm shift, a dimensionality. And the biggest problem will occur with the futurists. <laughs> I'm talking to you, John. The problem is this. You will sense things on a track that have been accurate before and then they won't happen. And the reason they don't is because the track is now different. You cannot take what was and apply it to what will be based upon the same principles and paradigms. What has taken place is systemic. You must have another track record. You must go for a while before you start to see the signs that measure differently than they used to. Even the most profound studies are based upon the past, not on the future. So it gets in the way of logical thinking of what might happen next. And that's when you have to create multiple scenarios of possibility. And not make up your mind it will be this one or that one based upon something in the past or a model in the past or even that which you believe is analytically accurate that happened in the past. Human nature itself will change. And how in the world do you track that? What are the data points that you will come in an agreement with with a paradigm that has not been featuring human nature 
that has shifted and changed. And all this to say, dear ones, that when you mix the old with the new, you have problems. Moving into the new energy is difficult. And some will see it as frightening and scary because the rudder that you counted on in the past, at least you knew who would do what and behave this way, is gone. The rudder is missing. A new rudder is being built called the paradigm of how humans think, what they want, and what they can collectively do in a new time, in an age where coherence is being measured between the consciousnesses of countries. It's different. And that brings me to you. And Aranda said, you're not here by accident. I will tell you this, more than volunteered to do this, you stood in line to be here. Because you didn't want to miss this, which you've lived lifetime after lifetime in the old energy. To miss the potential that you would go through something this shockingly different. You wanted it, and you're here. The veil hides so much from you, but let me ask you, why do you sit in the seats? What has awakened you? Why do you feel a little different? What brought you to these messages? Was it the compassion? Was it the love? Then you responded to the correct things, because that's who you are. You're an old soul, and you are the ones, singularly, one by one, perhaps by the tens of thousands, perhaps by the millions, who will change that coherence of the planet, that confluence of thought of the planet. And when that begins, you're going to see something. It's catchy, and we've said this before. Indeed, the ones with old energy eventually will die out. They'll carry it to their grave. They'll try to do this and that and force this and that. You'll see the last of the old guard, the last of the Illuminati, the last of this and that and this and that that you've known forever controlled humanity. And in its place are things you didn't expect. <laughs> And that's why you've got to make things up with your intuition, John, of what might happen, not logically based on human nature, but based on the intuition you would have that brought you to the planet to be a futurist. Some of the things not measurable at all are already inside you, given to you as a futurist, where you can project things without data, and then they will happen. I don't want to frighten you, but that's called channeling. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? To know that you're moving from a darker place to a lighter place. That the magnetic grid has changed for you to accomplish this. That the place in space that you are as a solar system is different to accomplish this. That the stars align to accomplish this. Right place at the right time. Don't fear what you signed up for. I want you to start examining yourself. We'll talk about that later, the next channel, this day, tonight. That's who you are. Ancient, appropriate, beautiful, prepared, experienced, compassionate, and awakening. And so it is.